Hello, hello, welcome back to another episode of Extractions in Aya, and I've got to be real with you here, um, a lot of the projects I'm working on currently are getting really long on me, mainly because I'm slow, but um, it's been hard to sort of get through projects and, and keep uh, churning out videos, and I suppose when I keep taking on big projects, it's easy to forget that I have quite a few, I suppose, obscure and interesting chemicals sort of, you know, tucked away back there that I think, oh, I'll do a video about that one day, and then, you know, three years pass by, and I haven't done the video. So, this is one of these chemicals uh, that, that I've, you know, pulled out, and it's rhenium metal, uh, a one gram sort of lump here, what do they call it? Pellet, one gram pellet. Pellet is a much nicer word than lump. And then I've got five grams of powder here. So let's talk about rhenium a little, because um, I don't think it's insulting to say that uh, most of you won't know very much about rhenium, uh, because it's it's just an obscure element. Even people who've done, you know, full chemistry degrees would have never mentioned rhenium at all. And knowing my comment section, there'll be two people that show up who have done PhDs in rhenium chemistry and are experts, but um, yeah, I, I think most of you, and myself included, don't really have anything to do with rhenium. It sort of sits in the middle of the periodic table. It's atomic number 75. I actually had to look at that there because I forgot. It seems like a bit of a forgettable element. One of the most noteworthy things about it was that it was discovered in 1925. So it was the last stable element to be discovered, and it's kind of shockingly late. People knew it was there, obviously, because we had the periodic table, and we knew there had to be an element there. It just wasn't discovered. So, you know, we had the proton and the electron decades before we had rhenium. Um, and the reason for that is its rarity. So it is one of the rarest elements. It's got a crustal abundance of less than one part per billion, which is, you know, one of the lowest crustal abundances. Where it does collect together is sort of uh, copper deposits. Its mind is sort of the, the byproduct of copper. Well, it's sort of a byproduct of a byproduct. So it's kind of a byproduct of molybdenum, which is often a byproduct of copper. In a good rhenium mine, well, you know, the byproduct of a byproduct, you're looking at about half a gram per ton of rhenium. For, for context, it's probably less than half the amount of gold in a profitable gold mine. So that's sort of the lowest limit you can go for gold, I think is about one gram per ton. The limit for rhenium, you know, byproduct of a byproduct um, is about half a gram per ton. On, on a, you know, on a profitable rhenium mine. So given the fact that it's one of the rarest elements, you'd think it's one of the most expensive, but it's not really that expensive. I mean, it is, it's an expensive element, but compared to a lot of the other platinum group metals, which it sort of gets lumped with, platinum, gold, iridium, rhodium, it's nowhere near as expensive. At the moment, I think the rhenium price is about $13 a gram. It's an expensive element. You can't buy a kilo of it, but you know, for $13, you can get this nice looking rhenium pellet. For platinum or gold, you're looking at, I don't know, 80 to 100 bucks for something this size. And rhodium, you know, you're looking at hundreds of dollars for something this size. So $13 is, is, is pretty good. So as with everything, if the supply is really low, but the price isn't too high, that must mean demand isn't that high. And that's true. There's not that many uses for rhenium. I believe the biggest use for rhenium in, in the current year is in building jets. And we don't build that many jets, like really high performance jets and and the rhenium alloy that they use in the jet is still only a couple percent rhenium you know and they're not using tons and tons of rhenium per plane so there's not a huge demand things like rhodium and iridium you know there's there's a lot of demand for them as well as a, a shortage of supply for things like catalysis and catalytic converter of cars that's a big use but things like rhenium don't end up going into there. Conceivably, it might get used in, you know, catalytic converters if, if iridium and rhodium start getting depleted or the price gets way too high. But I don't think it has as good a catalytic properties as a lot of the other uh, platinum group metals. So being sort of lumped in with the other platinum group metals group, you'd expect it to have low reactivity and uh, a very high melting point which it does, but um, it's not super, super unreactive. So we can dissolve it up and do some chemistry. Just get some of the powder out. We're gonna dissolve it up uh, into solution with some nitric acid. That's, hopefully it dissolves in that. I'm not sure how concentrated the nitric acid has to be before we get it into solution. And then we're going to try and precipitate out some ammonium per perenate. Perenate? I should have said that out loud before. I've just been reading it. I've never said perenate out loud before. It's a disgusting sounding word. It looks really nice written. Perenate. But saying it out loud. Perenate? Perenate. Perenate? Perenate. Alright, so I've just got uh, concentrated nitric acid in here. So that's the azeotrope, so 70%. So I'm hoping that this will be concentrated enough to dissolve the rhenium. Uh, if not, we can use red fuming nitric acid, which is 100%. 
um, which is, you know, stronger. But um, hopefully the concentrate acid will be fine. And my label has seriously degraded in storage. I'm trying a different method of filming as well. I'm just, um, whoa, you can see the mess around here. Usually I film over here. Um, it's a little messy at the moment. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to film with this lens. Still haven't removed the VB bottle. That's disgusting. I wasn't going to show you this bit, but... got a lovely green color. Uh, it's outside obviously because of the nitrogen dioxide. It was uh, pumping out quite a bit for a little while. Nothing uh, too threatening but it's good to not do that indoors. Um, I don't know if that's got, just gone that green because of the dissolved nitrogen oxide. So I might just dilute it up with a little bit of water and see if we can see that green color a little better because it's lovely. All right letting it stand for a day or two uh, we see it reverts back to sort of off yellow color rather than beautiful green. I suppose the beautiful green was just the uh, nitric oxides dissolved into the nitric acid, makes that sort of green color. It's really nice, but um, it wasn't real. And it's a nice reminder that um, all good things are fleeting and um, we are born here to suffer. So yeah, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and precipitate out some ammonium perenate now, because we have perenic acid in solution. That's uh, the uh, rhenium in a very high oxidation state, thanks to the oxidizing power of the nitric acid. I forget that I don't have any ammonia currently. Um, and we've got a lot of nitric acid here. I used a huge excess. So we're just gonna be using some ammonium bicarbonate. Hopefully we don't have to neutralize all the nitric acid in order to precipitate out the ammonium perenate. I'm hoping that maybe, you know, some ammonium ions in there will uh, start to precipitate it out because it's it's soluble, but it's not really that soluble. So this reaction might be a little violent, but we'll take our time um, and add in the ammonium bicarbonate slowly uh, as to not um, promote too much violence. Looks like we've got a nice precipitate here. It's settling out very fast, indicating it's quite dense as we'd expect from a from a heavy metal. Uh, yeah, uh, I might just cool this solution down. It's a little bit warm from the reaction of the ammonium bicarbonate and the and the nitric acid. Yeah, no worries. Simple chemistry, but you know you got to be pleased when things work. All right, I've taken off the excess nitric acid and just uh, put it in a bit of distilled water. It's all cold, uh, just so that it filters a little better. The nitric acid doesn't just eat through my filter paper. It's probably a bit overkill using this huge filter for this small amount of product, but uh, we'll do it and dry it out nicely. Here is our yield of ammonium perenate. Only 40 milligrams, which isn't a great yield. I mean, it's most of it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's most of it. I, I think the rest of it's just in this solution still. It's just because I use so much nitric acid. Uh, so yeah, the, the ammonium perenate has some solubility in, in the liquid. So if I was to boil off half this solution, I could probably get another crop of crystals out. 
which you know I might do. I suppose the interesting thing about ammonium perinate is its lack of reactivity. So it's in the same group as manganese. Permanganate is a highly reactive ion and, and you know, ammonium permanganate is potentially quite explosive ammonium permanganate. So ammonium perinate is nowhere near that. So if we heat it, we should see it slowly decomposing. Hopefully we'll see a bit of a yellow gas come off it, which is a volatile rhenium oxide. But I think overall it's just going to char up and turn into um, a dark rhenium oxide. That's it for the Rhenium. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Discord server. Uh, link in the description if you've never joined the uh, Explosion Fire Discord server. They're running a uh, competition for the third anniversary of the server, which is wild that it's been up for three years. The competition being a synthesis challenge, so there's uh, several different molecules, for example this one and this one. You get points for a theoretical synthesis, actually doing the practical and, and doing a write-up and confirming that you have the product. Uh, you get points, there's prizes, it's a little bit assignment-y but in a fun way. For example, one of the molecules that you could synthesize is this strange little fellow. Beat me at my own game. You technically have until December to uh, submit entries, so you've still got time to do the chemistry, but uh, don't leave it to last minute. Chemistry can't be rushed, so uh, don't leave it to last minute. You know, get on it if you want to be involved. It's in the Discord server, so um, yeah, that's cool. Has this goddamn bone dissolved yet? Or is it still going? Jeez, <sighs> all right. Anyway, see you next time.